Hello from the workshop again. I am officially a moron. And let me tell you the story, let me tell you why. Now, I've just come back from the Swede Lamb Baja Championship, second round, or the second event. Um, just quickly, we have three events, each event consists in, two, in three rounds. Two rounds on Saturday, one round on Sunday. Uh, first round, Saturday, went decent, it was very dusty, uh, quite dangerous because it was all loose, extremely, extremely dusty, couldn't see anything, and if he goes straight or hit something, it, it, it was bad, down the cliff or hit something bad, so yeah, it was a bit <laughs> hard. Um, anyway, managed to get, to get second in the class, still, um, behind Steve Jose, Jose? Steve Jones, or Jose, he's in Spanish, no, he's not Spanish, he's, he's British, so Jose, Steve Jose, really nice guy to talk, to, nice guy to talk, uh, very, very gentleman, very sporty guy, uh, he's, he's, yeah, just nice person. Um, anyway, he's faster than me, on about 20, 21 minutes lap times, he's about 10 minutes, 10 seconds faster than me, so quite a, a big margin. So what happened? The third... Uh, on Saturday, Sunday, the third round, uh, the terrain was better because you rained the day before, so it was like comfortable, you know, there is a space to overtake people because I don't like taking chances, I don't like risking it. Some people took the risks and it went fine, some people took the risk and or whatever and it costed them ribs and ambulances, so I'm not that kind of person, I don't care. To win the race, you first have to finish the race, that's the most important motto. Second thing, I'm not there to do the results. Results, if they come, is a good bonus. I'm there to learn because I'm just starting in this. So, you know, I, I need to learn. I need practice. I need time on the bike, not time to heal the bones and, you know, all the stuff and fixing the bike. And I'm brave enough to say to my missus, we have to spend more money on the bike because I broke it. That's, I'm not, no, not that brave. Anyway, back to us, sorry. So I'm, I'm uh, the third race, Start was pretty bad. I, I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna catch up these people. So I went off pretty quick and uh, I did manage to catch up with the with Steve, which again, first in the class, fairly quickly. And at some point I was like, hold on. I'm, I catch up with him very quick. Suddenly I'm not that much quicker and suddenly he's not that much slower. Something's wrong. As a matter of fact, I spoke to him later on he had a problem with the air filter and he lost power. He was worried because he had no idea what it was. So he was there trying to race, but something was wrong. So he just slowed down quite a lot. And when he saw me behind, because I was behind him, I, I did not pass him because I'm a bit stupid and I know. But in any kind of race, you know, when I see, you know, people like this that I know they're faster than me and all that stuff, I will not pass them on the weak spot. Uh, I'm just like that. You know, so, and I saw something was wrong. I prefer to wait. And then if I'm able to pass him, is when he is fast, not when he's resting or his weak spot. The second point, I probably wouldn't pass him anyway, because this is one of the reasons I'm there, like I said, is to learn. And the best way to learn for me is to stay behind someone who's faster and better than you, because he's got a better technique, he can corner better, I better stay behind and try to learn. If I pass in one corner or, or whatever situation, I probably won't be able to sustain that, that, that speed or, or stuff like this. And how much I take, take, take back home? Not much. If I stay behind him, I'll learn a lot. So stay behind. However, anyways, he saw it was me. It was like, look, the engine is gone. Something is wrong. You go. It's like, okay, you know what? This is my opportunity because the, I was in the first his position as lap times the guy behind us was quite i wasn't worried about it so if he's out i'm constantly second behind him for three races now or something like this i'm gonna take the first place it's not a goal but it's a nice bonus it was like mm, nice for once um so i started to go Mistake, obviously, again, under pressure, thinking stupidly, or pushing 101% instead of 90%, going away for some stupid reason. I came off. I came off. 
uh, nothing happened, nothing too bad, didn't hurt myself, didn't have the bike. But when I put the bike up, I started again, people passed me, it's like, oh shit, no matter, I catch them. But my bands, I'm shooting you know, they were like this. Honestly, that much bent. T7s, we already spoke with all the riders. When they come off, you know, the bars, they're already really bent because the bike is very narrow, probably. And the first thing you hit is the bars and, you know, you, you bend them on the mounts. I mean, there's nothing happening then. But you have to lose them a little bit more. You have to keep them looser, not like me. They are too tight. I tied them up with a hope that won't bend too much, but no, they did. And then it was just much, much harder to strengthen them. And when I'm trying to strengthen them, obviously you hit, obviously you put them on the, like this, and you hit them from this side with your wrist. I hurt my wrist, which was really hurt. That was stupid. It was like the rush of racing. Shit. In me time, another group of people passes me. I'm not starting panicking, but I'm starting cursing at myself and my stupidity. It was like, oh, I fixed that. Off we go. It was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to go. I'm going to give it my 100%. For a couple of laps, I'm going to catch everyone, I'm going to retake my position, and then I'm going to slow down to 90%, maintain, obviously, the, 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 the speed, maintain my pace, uh, and, and do all the laps. Because second round, I still had the second fastest lap time, but I only did five laps instead of seven, so I had zero points at the second round, so it was a bit shit. Anyway, this third one was my opportunity, so I was going my mind first place if nothing happens again racing so anything could happen you still a bit of luck uh going 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 a everything is going fine um and the marshal after three minutes stopped me at the, the first marshal that saw me stopped me he's like oh stop 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 something's wrong with your exhaust I was like, what's wrong with my exhaust and this fucker was because i hit it probably here well <laughs> definitely hit it here because you can see it it was hanging down, it was nearly on the floor. I was like, oh crap. And I had no spare parts. And this is the, the only time I didn't have my backpack with the, with the tools and all the stuff to fix anything, not even a single zip tie. Now, luckily, there was a guy, older guy, he stopped on the 450 and, or something like this, and he said, I'm not going if you want to have some zip ties. Thank you very much. So we strapped the exhaust, we bring it. It was down here, and we pushed it up as much as we could, zip tie to this board, to this hole there, blah, blah, and, you know, we managed to get back. The, the broken bracket, or the strap, whatever you want to call it, is this. This is what was left from it. So it's like, okay, this is the end of the race for me. I'm going to go back to the pits and try to, I don't know, nothing, because I have no spare parts as that's done. So back in the pits, I've tried to bring that pipe obviously higher, but it looked bent, like horribly bent. And it was banging obviously on the, on my swing arm, you know, from the, inter in, in, from the inside. I was like, okay, this is the end of the race. So what happened? Everyone obviously keep racing. And I'm there, very disappointed in myself. They stopped the race. Oh, it was end of the race. I cannot remember because I was off topic. Chris Beach. Chris Beach is, uh, is a guy from New Zealand. If you don't know who it is, I'm not going to explain because, oh, they won't be enough. Google it. You know, put it in the new, new video. But, you know, in this motorsport, it's, it's, it's someone big. You know, the guy troubles the world. And uh, anyway, Chris Beach is there. Everyone is. Are you serious? And apparently he's in the front of the line. And he leads everyone for another lap or two or three laps. I can't remember. And then if I'm not wrong, and he was doing some explanations, some teaching, some tutorials or something like this in the middle of the course. And I was like, shit, this is something not to miss. And I was like stabbing myself for, you know, for this. It was like, come on. So all of that missed it for nothing, for just one exhaust going down. Now this two doesn't end here. To the van, to the workshop today, obviously to bring the bike in to obviously service it after I like after any race to fix the exhaust and all that stuff. And I was going through my straps that I have in the in the box. I remove all the straps to put them back together. And when I noticed what I had, I had a spare bracket for the exhaust in the van all the time with me that I did not remember, which was this one. 
Yeah, this well, this is the old one actually. I used, I, I kept it in the van as a spare just in case. Of course, it's not in good condition. It's half broken, but it would hold no problems at the end of the race. And the exhaust, which looked bent and fucked to be honest, it wasn't. It was just twisted. Which, if I just look close at this, this was there. It was just twisted. So all I had to do is remove this, 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 this springs, twist this obviously link pipe in the position, put the bracket on, with the bolt on, and off we go. How long will that take you? A minute. With a rush, when you race on the stuff, you're going quick. A minute. That's all I will have lost. So possibly, probably, I will be still being in the race, fighting for the first place. Probably, if everything won't. All right, probably win that race, and also spend time with Chris Beach, whatever he was doing there. I don't even want to know at this point because I'm just pissed at myself. This is how stupid I am sometimes. It shows you that any race, any kind of event, any sort of this stuff, you know, first of all, don't give up just because you assume. Second, don't be a moron like I am. <clears throat> I'm not happy. <laughs> Anyways, the bike is not clean. Uh, sorry for the mess in the workshop anyway, but we're cleaning up, so it's a mess everywhere. Um, the bike is not clean because this is another thing that next weekend um, a BR fest festival is coming. And if the deal is still on, the bike should be at the Yamaha stand, at the official Yamaha stand. And I've just sent an email because I think that this bike should be there as it is, it's a race bike. It should be there all dusty and dirty straight from the race. I like it. I know I'm, I may be stupid or whatever. But I think it should be there in this condition. Straight out of the race, you know, in the pits, you know, in the paddock or on the stands with the Yamaha and show this it is prototype T7 or whatever you want to call it. I call it prototype T7 because I like to call it this way. Sounds official, sounds, sounds cool. The prototype. <laughs> well, it is kind of, but you know what I mean? Anyway, so if the deal is still on uh, and they still want it there, uh, they better let me know if they want to clean it or not because if it's too late, it's going to be too late to clean. It's going to be dirty anyway. Uh, one way or another, if you want to see the bike, it's going to be at the ABR festival. If it's not at the Yamaha stand, it's going to be with me. I'm going to be with the van. So if you want to pop down, say hello, have a chat or whatever. With, uh, um, but if the bike is going to be at the stand with the Yamaha, I'm going to be taking probably this to do the trial. Maybe with a passenger. Hmm, we'll see. Uh, yeah, don't ask for now. Don't ask for now. I'm trying not to spend too much time on this thing because we are extremely busy in a workshop. The orders are flying, people ordering from all over the world. And uh, yeah, tidy up the workshop because so then I can actually be way more productive. This is a shithole as it is now. But you wait till tomorrow. This is going to be go. I'm going to be spot on. Another thing, just quickly, I broke my camera, GoPro 8, on the, um, the one I usually have on the helmet on the racing for the footage. But that's not all too bad because I had to use my spare camera, which is GoPro Max, which is a 360 camera, and I mounted on the bars just to see if that makes any sense. Right here. Guess what? I've just looked at the footage last night and it's bloody awesome. It's great because what I didn't know is that Steve showed me you can upload a raw video 360 on YouTube. And that video in then is kind of like interactive. You choose if you want the camera pointing kind of like, let me simulate, from here, say in this point of view, or for example, this point of view, which is like you can zoom in and zoom out, is weird, honestly, it's strange. If you zoom out, you can see pretty much almost all the bike, everything is small, obviously it's like a bubble, but you can see a lot of stuff. You know, so the same, the same scene, for example, start line, you can see it, the rider leaving, what's leaving behind, or jumping, whatever, or forward, or you can actually see it from kind of this perspective. When you zoom out, it's like, it's weird. I'm trying to upload it, have fun with that, and see how it goes, kind of like interactive. I'm excited about that. 
uh, the same video you can see it in two or three different versions it looks completely different so right that's the end of the story i think i don't want to be too boring and uh, yeah i'll see you the next one or as soon as i upload that video see you soon